In this video, we're going to focus on interactive forms. For example, here we have a question, do we own a car? And we have a select option here. And right now we didn't select anything. That's why the brand of the car is being disabled. But if I click here on yes, I have a car. Then you can see here we have the option to select the brand. But if I say no, it will disable again. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to enable and disable the drop down based on the value in another drop down in JavaScript. For this, I have a blank HTML file here, just a standard file here. So let's start to create two select options here. So the first one will be, for example, you have a question here. Do you own a car? That will be our question. So we're going to say yes, select. And then in here, I'm going to give this an ID for now. Let's say yes, selection. And then uh, we have here, of course, the options. So what are the options? Let's say here value, the first one value would be blank. So there's none, and we just say here, please select. The next one, oh, not like that, the next option. And in this option, we have a value, and this value will be yes. So there will be uh, number one for yes. And then finally, you can duplicate this one, and we say no, and no equals zero. So it's like true and false, usually this is the case as well. So we have these options here. All right, so if I save this now, we just have a basic select here. So what I want to do now is another one here that will be dependent on whatever we select here. So I'm going to just duplicate this. I'm going to say here, car brand. So if you have a car, what is the brand of that car? So for this, I'll just say a very simple Ford. And this here will be a Tesla. And then finally, we have another one, maybe Toyota. Toyota, Toyota, uh, Toyota. Oh, sorry. I, I, we, well, my apologies for this. All right, that, that's really lousy. Anyway, so we have these three things here. So once we have this, now we have the selection here and we have this selection here, but of course we didn't disable it yet. So what I want to do now is I want to disable this item immediately. So let's say here, disable. Disable equals disabled. You can just leave this like quotation because it's being recognized as disabled. So now what I need to do is to create a script. Basically here our JavaScript and in our JavaScript we're going to start working on this. However, this JavaScript will have a function and the function will be on select. So I'm going to say on select. And if we do on select, what I want to do here is to trigger a function. So I'm going to say here a function. And let's say this one will be uh, disable car brand. I'm going to put it like that. But what I will do here is this is the function name. And then I'm going to say here, I'm going to put in here an argument. And the argument I'm going to put in here is the word this. And this refers to the element that we're currently on. So basically recognize the element here. So if I would do the, the this here, I'm going to give the name here and let's say here, um, and what is that? Own car, for example. And then what I want to do here is, first of all, I want to say console log, own car. And if I save this now and refresh, open up developer tab, you can see here it's already being disabled. However, it will nothing will happen yet here. However, if I select this, and you can see here on select or probably on change. Let's do that one. There you are, it's being triggered immediately. So when we select this, it will change the value here. So that's why it needs to be on change. And you can see we get all the information here. However, I don't want all the information. All I want is the value specific. So I want to say here, dot value to pinpoint the value and save this and refresh. Now I select this one, and then I have another one here, zero. So we get this, and if I put in here, please select, they just say blank. This is very useful for us. So now we can start to combine them together. You might notice why we don't use the ID. It's not necessary because we have the this uh, keyword here that will help us immediately. So it will select the element itself, but for 
the select of the ID carbon, we need to use the uh, ID name to select this specific item. So I'm going to start doing that. We're going to say here, document dot get element by ID. And make sure you spell ID correctly with the capitalized letters here. And then I'm going to put this in here. So this is the carbon, but this is a string value. And then what I want to do here is I'll say here, uh, what we can do here is basically we are selecting this, but we need to make an if statement first, I realize. The reason why is this. I want to say if the car, the own car value would be, and then what we're going to say here will be equal to one. In that case, I want this document. And basically what this really means here is document get element by ID, which means go in this document and get an element, and if you remember, our, these are just elements, both of these, and even the paragraph here is an element, if this would be a paragraph here, syntax. So it will get the element, in this case, the element is the select with the ID name of car brand, and then we're going to say here dot disabled, we're going to set disabled to false. So that's only if we hit value one, which means yes, if you own the car. So if I save this now, refresh, now if I select, yes, I own a car, all right, as you can see here, this instantly works nicely. But there's a but, if I say no, what happens? It recognizes zero, but it doesn't reset this back to disable. So that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to say else, if we have any other selection, it could be zero or it could be blank. In that case, I want to set the item here back on disabled. So we say disabled equals true. Semicolon here, select semicolon there, and we can do a semicolon here. Let's make it more neat. Save this, refresh, and there we are. So if I select this, yes, it is now selectable. If we say here, this, now it becomes unselected again. And that's basically how you can create a dependent drop down here with disable and enable. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to know some other options, which is also very useful for a form, I have another video I highly recommend you to explore as well. It's how to add an on-click to a button in JavaScript.